introduce the song and present to others, amen, none other than Dr. Carlos McLeod. I'm ready to have this. When you see me coming, riding on my mind. When you see me coming, when you see me coming, oh my, 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 Blackburn, 
amen to his wife, to all of you, my brother over there. Amen. Just thank God for you and we're not going to tarry the word very long at all. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be here. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be in the house of God. I'm glad to see you again. Hallelujah. God has done some more some traditional things for me since I seen you last. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Has God done some things for you since I seen you last? If I have a wrong scripture, say the wrong words. Hallelujah. Talk to my, to my heart and not my head. Hallelujah. We're going to talk today about, I want to talk to you from the subject, what does God have for me? What does God have for me? Amen. I want you to say that after me. What does God, what does God have for me? Have for me. Kings 17, 9. It's going to follow right along with what the devotional leader was singing this morning. She sucked straight into the message, so I just have to continue because she's already set the message up for us today. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is our own time. God, yes, he what? Yeah. Is. Yes, he what? Yeah. Is. Oh, my God. Sometimes you're pushing into your preaching before you get there. Yeah. <laughs> but 1 Kings 17 and 9 says, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a woman, widow woman was there. Notice it keeps saying, widow woman. <laughs> Second time, he uses the word widow woman as to emphasize her lack of something. Hallelujah. And her, her uh, low social economic status, a widow woman was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, fetch me. I pray thee a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Uh -huh. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. Uh, yes. And she said, That the Lord God liveth, I have not a cake. Mm. Somebody said, I don't even have a cake. I don't have a cake. But a handful of meal in a barrel, uh -huh. and a little oil in a cruise, uh -huh. and the whole I am gathering. Two, not one, two, not three, not five. Hallelujah. Uh, but just two little sticks. And then I may go in here and dress it for me and my son. She said, just what I got here, I can't give out to everybody. Uh, I, can't, I ain't got time. Uh, I ain't got time to, 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 to have no, no food pantry. I ain't got time to have no food. I, can't, I ain't got time to give out no food because this is all I have. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. She said, I pray thee. I don't even have a cake. That I may go in and dress it for me and my son. Which meant this woman, she, even though she was, was, was focusing on things that she didn't have, the woman didn't realize she was a culinary genius. Because she didn't just give out the bread. The Bible says she dressed the bread. Come on, <laughs> Come on see what God gives you something. He dressed it up for you. Can I get a witness? Uh, Elijah said to her, Fear not. Somebody say, Fear not. Somebody say, Fear not. Somebody say, Fear not. If you can get rid of your fear, just trust God. And just God can do anything which He can, and then trust God to the extent that He will do anything, and He can. And if you can, I can tell somebody, if you can have anything you ask for, uh -huh. you can, if you can have anything you ever imagined, what would it be? Uh huh. If you would just imagine it, you can have it. What would that thing be? Woman, she was at that place. She was at that place. She was at that place, but she had to use her imagination because in the next verse she told her, "Make a cake for me. Fear not to do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a cake first. Oh my God! Well, this was a greedy prophet because he wanted his food first. But she wasn't telling him to fix. He wasn't telling her to fix the food first because he was greedy. He was telling her because he wanted God to move her to the first of the line. Can I get a witness? Uh, sometimes you got to do that thing first. Uh, sometimes before you do anything else in the morning, you got to get on your knees first. Uh, sometimes before you talk to anybody else in the morning, you got to talk to God first. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, you got to do it first. But thus said the Lord God of Israel. 
the marrow of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the crumbs of oil fail. To God does not fail. Amen. God does not fail. He never fails. Hallelujah. Uh, until the day the Lord sends rain upon the earth. The word of God for the people of God. You may have your seats if you want to. Uh, I prefer to stand because that makes me get through real quick. <laughs> but you know, I'm tired today. So we want to talk about what God has for me. Uh, and if I could give it a little smaller, smaller title, I would say God's inexhaustible supply. All right. God's inexhaustible supply. And oftentimes when we read the scripture, we think about the oil and we think about the meal. Can I get a witness? Well, but I don't think any of y'all run out of oil and meal, uh, you know, I don't know those circumstances. I don't think we have those type of problems as much as we used to. I think today in this time, we run out of time. Uh -huh. I think in this day and time, we run out of strength. Yeah. I think in this day and time, we, 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 we run out of encouragement. Yeah. Those are the type that we run out of now, because now is the time when the people of God are looking for encouragement. They're looking for someone to help them go on, help them move on, help them believe, push them on in their journey. Uh, but Elijah, Elijah, come to this moment. I'm going to just preach for my memory this morning. I ain't got time to be looking at all that. And you come to this moment and the call of one is with the woman. Uh, they never been in line somewhere in the bank, somewhere, and they said that color woman, or they said that black woman, as a suggestion there was something wrong with you. As a suggestion that there was something wrong with this woman. And they didn't understand where this woman was. But sometimes we're at the very brink of our miracle. It's all get a will on. Uh, sometimes we always, uh, we say, well, why should I go to that church? Ain't no they ain't got nothing at that church. I ain't going over to that church. Ain't nobody got nothing over there. Ain't nobody got no money over there. I said, but this real woman didn't have anything either. And God, God who had everything, sent me love to a woman that had can I get a witness? Yeah, but be careful how you reject folks. Uh -huh. Be careful how you talk about folks. Uh -huh. Be careful how you're sizing people up. Uh -huh. when, you, when you don't know that, that might be the person that has the miracle. Yeah. Huh? Huh? You better be careful how you talk to people. Yeah. Uh, because this woman, even though she was a real woman, she uh -huh. was also a blessed woman. Hallelujah. So we see in this text we have several situations going on. Sometimes when you are going through life, you don't have just one problem. You don't have one, two, multiple problems at the same time. Amen. And no different in this text that's in the first Kings 17. We talk about this text. There were several problems. The first problem was they didn't have no rain. Didn't have no rain. It's kind of like last night. It, Pastor was telling me that it rained last night about four o'clock in the morning. I don't even remember hearing a thing. I was just that sleep. <laughs> but I woke up this morning and I saw do on the ground. And I knew God had visited. Amen. Not only was there a drought, but there was a, there was a drought with the, with, with, with the uh, weather, but there also was a problem with food. Yeah. This woman, she did not have any food. <laughs> Not only did she not have any food, but Elijah didn't have any food either. You ever, you ever ran out of something, or you ever needed something, and then you went to call somebody, and they didn't have it either? What a mess you can find yourself in sometimes when you go to the wrong person for your supply. Now, when you go to the wrong person for what we call your sustenance, when you go to the wrong person for your provision, when God has everything, tell us who God has everything. I, I, you know, I just don't know what y'all believe. Say it one more time. God has everything. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I like the way you play. Don't talk about that. My God, the woman was running out of food. And God told Elijah to go to a lady who lived in a town full of witchcraft and idolatry. You know, if he's going to send me to get something, I want you to send me to a safe place. Did you get all the understanding? You know, God will 
have sent me to, to the store. I wish you wouldn't send me to family that's going to rock at all. Sometimes send me to Carolina. Sometimes send me to Tubbington. But look like every time I got to say something, I got to go over to the family. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all don't know what the family supermarket is. Raise your hand, you've been on the family supermarket. Amen. 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 See, Elijah to a town full of witchcraft and adultery. Yeah. Got the bright idea of sending Elijah to a woman who didn't have anything. Uh, hallelujah. Sent her to his place. Hallelujah. I don't want to eat in that town. I don't know, Charles, I got third place, I don't even want it. I don't even need that. Right. But I'll tell him that I'm going to take it home. I'll tell him, give me up there. I'll put it in the bag. I'll go home. I'm going to take this home with me. Right. Now, when I get home, I go straight to that great trash can. I live in the trash can. I'm going to drop it in there. Third place, I just don't want to even get my blessing at. Can I get a witness? But if you are connected with God, God will let you go when it's all right. Yeah. Somebody say, it's all right. All right. Somebody say, it's all right. God. Stop asking God to send me something that prosperous. God wants to send you to a place where you will learn to trust Him. Carry a witness. And sometimes you got to go that you have no cause but to obey God. You got to go where God makes the way. When God does the, the, the sense and pick a cake, we choose us. Carry a witness. It's not like taking children in the store and saying, What do you want? And they pick it all over the stuff. Get the big of the Hallelujah. The first thing I have for you is that how it doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to make sense where God is sending you. It doesn't have to make sense what you're going through. It doesn't have to make sense the people that are trampled on you. It doesn't have to make sense the hallelujah valley that you're in right now. It doesn't have to make sense the best that you're in right now. It doesn't have to make sense the people that you're connected to right now. Because of God, God is blessing us. We can sit in any way we want to. Hallelujah. She gave it to the prophet. 
Hallelujah. And she fed him. Hallelujah. You got to ignore some things sometimes. You got to ignore some things. You got to ignore those excuses. You got to stop giving God those excuses. You got to ignore that empty refrigerator. You got to ignore that empty refrigerator. I know about y'all alive and well. We didn't never have a full refrigerator. Uh, it's whatever grandmother could make. Sometimes she made dumplings. Sometimes she made cabbage that she got from the man down the street. Sometimes she made stout beans. Sometimes she made whole cakes. Sometimes she had rutabagas. Whatever she had. God bless it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does God have? So he, she gave it to the prophet. Yes. Uh, and what I like about the, this fact is that 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 when the prophet asked her for it, she said, I, "This is all I have." Woo! You talk about her saying, "This is all I have." There's something about when you say, "That's all I got," then take something out of you. When a parent gives a child their last dollar, they say, "That's all I got." Then take. When she said that, when she made that statement, Elijah just ignored her. Yeah. Woo, ain't you glad that sometimes, ain't you glad that God will ignore our thoughts sometimes? Mm -hmm. Ain't you glad that God will ignore our, our faith, our lack of faith sometimes? Mm -hmm. He'll ignore what we say. When we throw blocks and burn ourselves, God will ignore me. He'll still bless us. Yeah. Yeah. So I say glory. glory. So I say glory. Sometimes the reason God doesn't move, the reason He don't move all the time, is because sometimes He's trying to develop our trust. Hallelujah. Sometimes He's trying to develop our trust, and He wants somebody who will give their all to God. I'm telling you, when you begin to give your all to God, uh, you'll see God begin to move, and that's what He did for the widow woman when the prophet left. The next day, she went back to the beer barrel. Yeah. And the beer barrel still has a meal in it. Come on, carry it with us. You look back at your paycheck. You still got a little bit left. Yeah. You didn't even expect to have nothing left. But God will multiply the seed from the sower. Carry it with us. Even the Lord will multiply God. Even the Lord will multiply God. You all shout.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. And he's coming. He's coming to your town. 